Example three, identify the vertex, axis, and intercepts on the graph. So it's already been graphed for you. You ought to be able to just look at it. So we want to find the vertex. Well, there's the vertex. The vertex is the point. What is that? One and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One negative eight. One negative eight. Vertex. Axis. The axis is going to be this vertical dotted line right there through the vertex. It always has to do with the x number. The axis is x equal 1. And the intercepts, okay, there are a couple of x intercepts at negative 1 and what is that? 3. But there's also a y intercept at negative 6. So let's label those x intercepts negative 1 and 3. y intercept at negative 6. All right, so we've got the vertex the axis, the x, and y intercepts. Those are all important things to be able to notice on a graph. Number four, find the vertex and axis for the parabola with this equation. So we have a, we have a formula for the vertex. We know that the vertex is going to be given by negative b over 2a, comma, whatever you get when you plug that in. So let's do negative b over 2a. Uh, negative b is 12 in this problem, and a is negative 3, so over 2 times negative 3. That's negative 12 over negative 6, which is 2. I need to plug that in. So plug in the 2 into the problem. You've got negative 3 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 minus 8. If you can do that in your head or do that on paper or whatever, do that by hand, then that's great. If you can't, then please use a calculator. Okay? If you use a calculator, then please use parentheses. Negative 3 parentheses 2 squared plus 12 parentheses 2 minus 8 is 4. Okay, so however you do it, you're going to get 4 there. We know now the vertex is 2, comma 4. If you know the vertex is 2, 4, well, the axis is always just the x number. So we knew the axis back here. The axis, x equals 2. Okay, so let's think about the graph of that. I know it doesn't ask me to graph, but I want to think about that anyway. Okay, so if the vertex is at 2, 4, let's look at this. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. The vertex is right there, and I know because this is a negative 3, it's going to go upside down. Okay, um, but remember I told you about the 1, 3, 5 pattern? Think about that 1, 3, 5 pattern. If we have a 1, 3, 5 pattern, but this number is negative 3, it's going to multiply. Negative 3 times your 1, 3, 5 pattern is going to be negative 3, negative 9, negative 15. Okay, kind of big numbers. The negatives just tell me that it opens down. So I, I don't really care about the negatives other than I know that it opens down. So if I was going to graph this parabola, I would go from the vertex, I would go down 3. So 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And then I'd have to go down 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And over 1 would be like here and like here. Okay, so your result, that 3 really makes this parabola steep. So you can still do the 1, 3, 5 pattern, but it's got a multiplier and it becomes a lot steeper. All right, and that's, that's kind of what we're going to look at. As for this question, though, it only asks for the vertex 
and the axis. Next, projectile motion. A lot of problems in algebra can be modeled by this. You've got, uh, in this example, a football being kicked up in the air. And notice that football takes the flight path of a parabola. So a lot of these questions can be answered by thinking about parabolas. Now look at this equation. This is kind of your general form. But what you need to notice is this is initial velocity of the ball. And this is initial height. Number five says a ball is projected directly upward from an initial height of 75 feet with an initial velocity of 112 feet per second. A, give the function that describes the height of the ball in terms of time. So all we have to do is plug in those numbers. You've got the initial height, that was S0 right here, and the initial velocity was V0 right here. So plug those numbers in. You would have S of T equals negative 16 T squared plus velocity was 112 T plus initial height was 75. Give the function. There it is. Part B says, after how many seconds does the ball reach its maximum height? What is the maximum height? Okay, so, you know, we're, we're kind of thinking about a parabola or something, but, but when they talk about maximum height, they're talking about the vertex. We know because we've seen these problems before that they're definitely going to be talking about the vertex. So we can find the vertex. We can graph this thing. Let's, let's go to Desmos and let's actually just graph it, okay? We have negative 16 t squared plus 112 t plus 75. That didn't graph it, I guess, because Desmos doesn't recognize t as a variable. So let's put, let's change it to an x instead of a t. Okay, that might be better. All right, so we've got this really steep looking parabola. Let's let's just change the x let's change the x-axis we're going to go from negative 10 to 40 and your y-axis we're going to go from negative 10 to, uh, to 60. let's crank this x40 down to x20 okay that is a little bit better i guess So remember, they were asking about the maximum height. They're asking about the vertex. And we can find the vertex just by clicking on Desmos. So that's kind of nice. The vertex is 3.5 comma 271. So we would just have to answer the question. It says, after how many seconds does the ball reach its maximum height? And what is the maximum height? Well, that's these two numbers right here. Okay, 3.5 seconds. In 3.5 seconds, the maximum height is 271. So, you know, how do we show our work? What was it, 271? <laughs> the maximum height is 271 feet after 3.5 seconds. That's probably the easiest way to do the problem, okay? Use, this, use some kind of graphing calculator to, to graph it, find that vertex, and do that. Now, could we find the vertex another way? Well, sure, we could have done, we could have done negative b over 2a and plugged it in, okay? That, that'd be no problem. We can do that. We can do that if we want to. We can graph it if we want to, really, however we want to find that. 
vertex. Five C. For what interval of time is the height of the ball greater than two hundred feet? Okay, that is um, that's an interesting question. Okay, if you think about this, all right, look at our graph. Our graph looks something like this, I think. And it's steeper than that. I don't know. That's fine. Um, but. What we want to look at here is, you know, what happens at 200 feet? Okay. We want to know what part, we want to know about the part of the parabola that's greater than 200 feet. That's what we're looking at. Okay. So if you think about the equation, negative 16 T squared plus 112t plus 75. A lot of the times we want to look at it, what happens when it's equal to zero. But in this case, we want to think about what happens when it's equal to 200. Okay? We're talking about, so we have some kind of comparisons for um, my equation, my parabola, and the number 200. When is that parabola greater than the number 200? If you think about solving this equation, you would probably want to subtract the 200 over. If you subtract 200 over, you get negative 16t squared plus 112t minus 125 equals 0. And we could solve this thing using the quadratic formula. Remember that says negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And here's where some people get lost because there's a lot of calculations. We can totally do this by hand, but, but let's go back and let's, let's look at the, the graph again. Okay? Let's look at the graph. Okay, here's our, here's our parabola. And basically we want to look at what happens when... Um, it compares to y equals 200. Okay? We want to look at the part of the parabola that's above 200. Well, these points right here might be important points to look at. Okay? When is the graph above 200? For what interval of time? Well, time is on the x-axis. Time is almost always on the x-axis. So this number, 1.393, and this number, 5.607, might come into play, okay? Those two numbers are going to be kind of important. The height is 200 at time 1.393. The height is 200 at time 5.607. So we can do quadratic formula and plug in B is 112 and A is this and, and C is this, and you can totally do that by hand, but let's check something else out. Okay, if we go to math sites, notice one of the math sites says quadratic formula. Okay, this calculator will do that for you if you enter in the coefficients. So we can do uh, A was negative 16 and B was 112 and C was, remember what it was? Okay, I don't want to use 75 here. I want to use this because you, you have to have equals zero to use quadratic formula. Not equals 200, equals zero. So my C number for that website is going to be negative 125. because we have to have that equal zero. So if we hit solve, okay, it's a real thin looking parabola, but that's, you know, that's kind of what it is anyway. If you notice down here, they give you the vertex, and that is 3.5 comma, um, it's actually 271. I think there's a spacing issue with the programming, but um, more importantly is look at these two numbers right here. These are your two solutions, okay? These are your two solutions, 1.393 and 5.60. Okay, there we go. That's Those are the numbers, those are the solutions to this red equation. That's basically, this number is 1.393, and this number was, what was it, 5.6. 
look back at Desmos. 5.607. Okay. So that's the interval of time between there. So for what interval of time is the height of the ball greater than 200 feet? <clears throat> Excuse me. We would say parentheses 1.393 because we don't want it equal. We don't want to equal those two numbers because if we equal 1.393, we would equal 200 feet and we want to be greater than. So in between those two numbers, that's the interval we're looking at. After how many seconds will this thing hit the ground? There's two ways to look at it. Okay. Number one is, look down here. Here's where the thing hits the ground. At 7.616 seconds. That's when the thing hits the ground. Just look at the picture. Okay? 7.6 seconds. Or we can come back here and solve the original equation. Negative 16t squared plus 112t plus 75. Notice you get two solutions. Okay? But there's something wrong with one of the solutions because it's negative. We wouldn't have a negative time. It wouldn't hit the ground in negative 6 seconds. There are negative 0.6 seconds. Okay. But notice the 7.616 number is right here. 7.616. 7.616. That's your answer. T equals 7.616 seconds.